This is the form design we're shooting for. Let's lay it out in rows and columns. Our first row includes the pet name and adoption date. The second row displays three sets of controls in the left column to fill the space required for the text area in the right column. In the left column, we could add a nested set of rows and columns within this cell. We would add three rows, one for each input, and one column. But since we don't need multiple columns, let's keep it simple without the nesting. The third row has two sets of controls in the left column, and the Save button centered in the right column. Horizontally, the form elements are evenly divided, taking six of the twelve columns. Let's add these rows and columns. We'll use Bootstrap's grid system to lay out our Create a Pet page. We are back in VS Code once more with the Pet Cafe folder open. We are looking at the pet-create.html file. Live server is running, and the page appears in the browser on the right. Scrolling up, from our design, we want the pet's name and virtual adoption date in the first row. We'll add a div element above the pet's name. We'll set the class equal to row to define our first row. Move the closing div tag to after the pet's name, and I'll reformat. Instead of creating another div element for the column, let's change the paragraph element to a div. Be sure to change the opening and closing tags. We give this div a class of call md6 to take up six of the 12 columns. Notice the input box is now half its width. We want the adoption date in the second column, so let's cut it with its paragraph elements from down here and paste it up here within the row. We'll again change the paragraph element to a div element both in the opening and closing tags, and give that div element a class of call md6 to take up the remaining six columns of the row. Nice. To provide a bit more space, let's add mt3 to the row for a top margin. Moving on to the second row, recall that all four of these form controls are in the second row. The first three are in the first column, and the text area is in the second column. To achieve this, add a div element around those first form controls and set its class to row. And let's add mt3 for some extra spacing. Be sure the closing div is after the backstory. And I'll reformat. Since these three elements are in one column, we'll add another div around them and set its class to call md6 and move the closing tag after the pet's age, and I'll reformat. I think it's important to keep the formatting clear so that we can easily see how our elements line up. For the second column, we'll change the paragraph elements around the backstory to a div. Be sure to change both the opening and closing tags. Then set the class to call md6 to take up the remaining space in the row. Cool! To clean things up a bit, Let's delete any remaining paragraph elements in this row. Here, 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 and here, and reformat. Then let's add a bit of a margin above the pet's age label using MT4. Scrolling down, the last row displays the two controls in the left column and the button in the right column. We again start by adding a div element around all of these elements and set its class to row. And let's add MT4 for some extra spacing. Be sure the closing div tag is after the button, and I'll reformat. Since these two elements are in one column, we'll add another div element around them. We set its class to call MD6 and move the closing tag after the checkbox. I'll delete the extra paragraph elements. Notice that the checkbox is a bit close to the email address. Let's add MT3 to its div element. For the second column, we'll change the paragraph elements around the button to a div and set the class to call MD6 to take up the remaining space in the row. Be sure to change both the opening and closing tags. We'd like the button to be a little more centered. Centering elements in Bootstrap requires the dflex class, which creates a flexible container called a flexbox. Then add justify content center to center the box horizontally, 
and a line item center to center the box vertically. Looking good. Notice as we resize the browser, the controls resize at each breakpoint. When we size down to the phone form factor, the controls stack vertically to fit in the display. Nice. But note that the save isn't working. We'll need some JavaScript code and a backend server for that. We've now styled each of the pages for our virtual Pet Cafe website. Yay! If you want some additional practice, add any additional custom elements as you wish. If you'd like some additional homework, go back to the home page and style the Tell Us More About You section. Use form classes for the input elements, add a border like we did for the Fun Facts section, and lay it out using the Bootstrap Grid system. The result should look like this. Now let's close the browser. Stop Live Server by clicking on the port number here, and exit via code. Then we'll return to the slides. Now let's finish up this course with some final words and next steps. And don't forget to like and subscribe.